Hey everyone, welcome back to another video quick tip. This time we're going to continue on with jQuery and I'm going to teach you a cool little trick that I myself just learned the other day. Uh, I learned it from Remy Sharp who actually learned it from uh, Dave Methvin who's on the jQuery team. And it's a way to allow for sequential animations. So for example, uh, rather appropriately we're in JSpin created by Remy. And let's say that we want to, uh, let's create some paragraphs, so watch. Okay, so we have three paragraph tags, and we want to fade each of those out sequentially. Uh, it's actually not as simple as you might think. So we could do something like fade out. We might think this works, though we know it won't. So let's check that out, preview. And of course, they all fade out sequentially. Uh, we could maybe try to be clever and do something like var i equals zero, and then and then do get p dot eqi plus plus and something like that. And that's along the, the right path, but that's not going to work perfectly easier. Uh, so what most people do is you'll do something like get p first dot fade out slowly and then we'll run a callback function and that's where you can do something once it's completed and then maybe you could do something again like uh, get this dot next dot fade out slow preview that and that one goes rid of and then the next one but you can immediately see uh, that your your code becomes really cluttered if you're gonna have all of these nested callback function it doesn't make sense so is there an easier way uh, just in a line or two of code to just make an a infinite number of uh, elements fade out sequentially and yes so what we're gonna do first is create a variable called paras for paragraphs and we're just gonna access all of the paragraphs uh, in our DOM and then I'm going to create another one called i, and this will just be an iterator. So that'll be equal to zero. And next, I'm simply going to do jQuery paras, but i. And why don't you just go ahead and let me type this out, and then I'll explain it, because it can be definitely a bit confusing. Slow, and then arguments dot call e. Okay, so what what are we doing here? Well. In, First might be confusing because why are we creating an object around an object already? Normally when you do something like this you would just do paras that fade out because you already have your wrap that's re returned to the jQuery object and then you have access to those methods. Why are we doing it like this? And it's because we're actually accessing uh, it like an array. So when we do i here, we're no longer returning the jQuery object. We're actually, um, you know, it would be like if you did jQuery p zero, that would no longer be the jQuery object you're accessing uh, that first item in the array. So we want to work with that, but we still want it returned as an object. So we're going to do paras, and then we're going to get the very first item, which will reference p. Then, as soon as we get that, we're going to take i and increment it by one. And then we're going to wrap that item in, a, uh, with, in jQuery. That way we can continue with the methods. We call fade out slowly and then arguments.call e is equal to the function uh, that was called. So we need to make sure that we wrap this. Do a self-invoking anonymous function. And now arguments.call e will be equal to this right here completely. So if you were to do alert arguments.call e, this is what would be alerted in the window. So let's see how that works. I'm going to preview, gets rid of the first one, then the second, and the third one. Now it should be noted that um, in, if you come down here to my preview and we watch again, you're going to see this error at the bottom. And this is because you can see it's actually right there. And this is actually a difference between jQuery 1.3 and 1.4. So you can see I'm running 1.3 here. And in this instance, remember, it's going to keep uh, going up. So once it goes to uh, maybe the fifth item, that doesn't exist. And so you would think it would return an empty, uh, the, just the jQuery object, but it doesn't. It returns undefined. So for example, if we just go to the most recent version and we run it, no error uh, occurs and that's because it does return the jQuery object so you don't have to worry. If you have to work with an older version of jQuery for some reason, you would want to do the workaround where we say uh, if that doesn't exist, then just return uh, or then just get an empty uh, just array like that. And then if we go back to 1.3, preview it, you're not going to see any error occur. Okay, so that's been your tip. I'd love to talk more in the comments with you and uh, this is a cool trick so be sure to check it out. Thanks guys. Bye.